These are integrated circuits. Commonly called microchips, they are arguably the most significant invention of the 20th century. The appearance of these devices unleashed a technological revolution. If you're interested in electronics as a career or hobby, a basic knowledge of integrated circuits is essential, and a good place to start is with one of the first and most successful microchips, the 555 timer. This IC was engineered decades ago and is still in use. The 555 is inexpensive and available from most electronic component suppliers. This 8-pin package contains a 555 integrated circuit. Fine wires connect the microchip to the pins. This type of package with two rows of pins is called a DIP or dual inline package. The 555 is versatile. With the addition of some simple components, it can be configured to do everything from controlling a robot to making music. As an introduction to this device, I'll demonstrate how to create a circuit designed to flash an LED, similar to the circuit used to control turn signals and four-way flashers on a car. If you attempt this circuit, you should be familiar with LEDs, resistors, and standard safety procedures when working with electricity. Always power your projects with low voltage batteries. We will construct our circuit on a solderless breadboard. The pins on this style of IC are spaced so they will plug into a standard breadboard. If you're unfamiliar with breadboards, view our video on these devices. The pins on an IC package are numbered. Typically a key mark like this little circle identifies pin 1. The next pins in the row are 2, 3 and 4. Across from 4 is 5 then 6, 7, and 8. I'm going to follow this circuit diagram while we build. Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with circuit diagrams. The process will become apparent as we proceed. The rectangular shape in the center of the diagram represents the 555. The numbers around the 555 represent the pin numbers. I arranged them to make it easier to draw the diagram. That's why they are not in order on the diagram. The plus V symbol represents the connection to the positive battery terminal. This is a ground symbol. It represents the connection to the negative battery terminal. Don't connect your battery to the circuit until the circuit is completely built. Let's start construction. Looking at the diagram, I see we have a line joining pin 2 and pin 6. This means we need to connect a metal wire from pin 2 to pin 6. Find pin 2 and 6 on the 555. Then insert a short wire. One end into the same row as pin 2, the other end into the same row as pin 6. Looks like this when completed. Next, we will add a resistor to the circuit. The wiggly lines represent resistors. Let's insert R1. View our video on resistors if you are unfamiliar with these devices. We see R1 is 33K. This is a 33,000 ohm resistor. The color bands are orange, orange, orange. According to the diagram, we connect it from pin 2 to pin 7. One end of the resistor goes into an unused hole in the same row as pin 2, the other end into the same row as pin 7. Next we will connect R2. R2 is 100,000 ohms. Color bands, brown, black, yellow. This is where circuit diagrams can be confusing. We see that R2 connects one end to pin 7. The other end offers some choices pin 8, pin 4, or the positive supply line from our battery. The positive supply line is the row of holes beside the red line. Any of these three choices would work. In a case like this, choose the easiest connection to make. I would choose pin 7 to the positive supply line, the holes beside the red line. The connection would look like this. The next component we will add is a capacitor. On the diagram, it is C1. It looks like this. 
Capacitors are like miniature rechargeable batteries. The unit of capacitance is the farad. We need a 10 microfarad capacitor. That value is indicated on the side of the capacitor. The voltage rating is the maximum voltage that can be used to charge this device. Another important fact about this capacitor is that it is polarized. It has positive and negative terminals. The negative lead is indicated by these symbols on the side of the capacitor. According to our circuit diagram, the positive lead of the capacitor connects to pin 2, the other lead to the negative supply line. The negative line is the row of holes adjacent to the blue line. Let's add the LED next. Light emitting diodes are polarized. The positive lead connects to pin 3 of the 555. The other lead has to connect to a resistor, R3. To do this, connect the positive lead to pin 3 and the other lead to an unused row on the board. To complete the connection, connect R3, a 1000 ohm resistor, from the same unused row to the negative supply line, any hole beside the blue line. We have three connections left to make, all of them wires. One wire goes from pin 4 to the positive supply line. The next wire goes from pin 1 to the negative supply line. And the final connection is a wire from pin 8 to the positive supply line. This circuit does not require any connection to pin 5. The last step is to connect the battery. I'm using a standard 9 volt battery with a half watt 220 ohm resistor connected to the negative lead. I recommend you do this as well. This resistor is a safety feature that will reduce current if you have an error in your wiring that creates a short circuit that could cause a component to overheat. The final battery connection is made with a positive lead connected to the red power line, negative to the blue line. The LED should start blinking. If it doesn't, disconnect your battery and start troubleshooting. Confirm with a meter that your battery is okay. Then check the LED. Is it oriented correctly with the positive terminal connected to pin 3? Next check the capacitor. Is the positive terminal connected to pin 2? Confirm that all components are installed correctly. A meter is very useful when troubleshooting circuits. The capacitor and resistors control the flash rate of this circuit. Substitute a 1 microfarad capacitor in this circuit and the flash rate speeds up. Substitute a 100 microfarad capacitor and the flash rate slows significantly. It is possible to create pulse intervals ranging from hours to milliseconds. This circuit is a basic introduction to the 555. This device is actually very versatile. It can be configured to control servo motors, create sounds, drive binary counters, any application requiring a pulse generator. Search the internet for 555 projects. You will find some interesting uses for this functional device. We have more science and technology projects at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the projects link.